The cell is not going to take doctor medicine. The only thing a doctor can do to a cell is poison it with a drug or, or yank it out with surgery. See, our misunderstanding or lack of understanding of the cellular nature of our bodies, how we are composed of cells, is the reason why we think it's acceptable to go to the doctor and have organs removed when we're sick. Because we don't know that endometriosis is uterine cell disease. We don't know that heart disease is heart cell disease. We don't know that, that multiple sclerosis is nerve cell disease. We don't know Alzheimer's disease is brain cell disease. We don't know osteoporosis is a bone cell problem. All the health challenges we have are cell problems. Why is this important? Because we have control over the cell, not the doctor. Now the outer coating on a cell, that's really where the rubber meets the road. The outer coating on a cell, this little sliver of oil on the cell, is what tells the inside of the cell what's happening on the outside of the cell. And this is how chemistry in the cell proceeds. The cell will make things and the genetics itself, the DNA itself will turn on and off based on what, is, what the messaging is uh, from the outer layer of the, the cell membrane is to the inside. So the outer environment, the milieu, the stuff that the, the cell is sitting in communicates to the interior of a cell through the membrane. The membrane is the interface between the outside of a cell and the inside of a cell, and it's mostly fat. It's mostly EFA and cholesterol for that matter. EFA as an essential fatty acid. That word essential is so vital when it comes to understanding how to take care of our bodies. We say it all the time, essential fatty acids, essential nutrients, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, essential amino acids, essential vitamins. What does that mean? Essential means it's like air. It means without it, you're dead. There's a difference between important and essential. Okay? There's lots of things in the body that are important. Digestive enzymes are important. Probiotics are important. Food is important, oxygen is important, air is important. Lots of things are important, but not a lot of things are essential. Oxygen is essential. Vitamins are essential. Two of the fatty acids are essential. That means, what's the difference between important and essential? Well, important, that's important, you know? You gotta have it. But essential means, if you don't have it, you're dead. And there are two fatty acids that are said to be essential fatty acids, meaning without them, you're dead. And one of the major reasons why these things are so essential, why these fatty acids are essential, is because most of the cell membrane, this thin layer of fat and oil that coats a cell that is responsible for the genetics, yes, the genes turn on and off based on the messaging that's coming in from the, from the cell membrane. It's made up of EFAs. If you're deficient in EFAs, your cells are not gonna be able to communicate messaging to your genes. Now, it turns out that EFAs also are important at the genetic level too. Essential fatty acids are part of how, cells, how genes turn on and off. See, if you have a genetic problem, you still have a nutritional problem. You're not gonna hear this from the drug companies because they're obsessed with genetic science. They're obsessed with genetic medicine. Why? Because they make big bucks on genetic medicine. But the way to control your genes is to control the membrane. The way to control your genes is to make sure your cells are healthy. The way to control your genes is to make sure you're eating correctly and you're supplementing correctly and you're breathing correctly. That's how you control genetics and that's how you eliminate genetic diseases, so-called genetic diseases like cancer for that matter. JAMA, internal medicine, beta blockers can be a killer if, uh, if you're dealing with heart disease. How do you like that? Beta blocker drugs for high blood pressure, they dumb down the heart. That's how a beta blocker works. It stops your heart, or it doesn't stop your heart, but it slows down the heart. It blocks the nervous system that runs the heart. Beta blocker drugs for high blood pressure is from JAMA. Almost double the chances for a heart attack in patients who are going through surgery. If you're going through surgery, of course it's going to double your chances of a heart attack because it's slowing down your heart. And if you're taking your beta blocker drugs with others, uh, diuretics, with other antihypertensives, not just diuretics, but calcium channel blockers or ACE inhibitor drugs, the risk is even higher. I'm telling you. The craziness of our pharmacological model 
of dealing with chronic diseases. It is just absurd and not, not ha-ha absurd. It's just mean. Here's another one. This one's from uh, the journal Psychosomatic Medicine. People who are happy and retain a positive attitude ha also have a healthier heart. And that can be the difference between life and death for people who have a heart condition. How do you like that? That's from Penn State University researchers in the journal Psychosomatic Medicine. Now, I know it sounds silly. Just be happy. Retain a positive attitude. Sounds so bolder. Sounds so new age hippie. But guess what? Via the activity of hormones, being happy is the best medicine. Laughter is the best medicine. These are all ways that we can control our health. This is so important to understand. You know, I'm guilty of beating up on the medical model, but the good news is, is we don't need the medical model. The good news is, is that our health is something that we can control in large part. Now, yes, there are the, the, you know, we live in a polluted world. We drink crappy water. We eat crappy food. We got GMOs. We got antibiotics everywhere. And yes, there are these kinds of elements in our, in our world, but through things like mood and attitude, and eating less food, and eating less sugar, and not using prescription drugs. These are all ways that we can control our health. This is such good news. You guys, if you're dealing with a chronic degenerative health issue, I am telling you, you don't have to. If you're dealing with a chronic degenerative health issue, you don't have to be dealing with it. By just applying some simple strategies, non-medical strategies, this has nothing to do with your doctor. It's none of the doctor's business. You can fire your MD. We can do this ourselves. Get on a good nutritional supplement program first and foremost. Make sure you're breathing, not first and foremost, among other things. Make sure you're breathing correctly. Make sure you're staying away from problem foods. Make sure you're eating less foods. Making sure you're staying away from sugar. Eating more protein. Using more glutamine if you want to wean yourself off of sugar. Using essential fatty acids. Relaxing the body. Massage. Hot tubs. Foot massage back rubs. These are all super health strategies that are simple and easy for us to employ without a doctor. There is no need for a doctor if you're having chronic degenerative diseases. If you have a, uh, you get hit by a car, you need some surgical procedure, you're in miserable pain because of gallstones, yes, obviously you need to do what you have to do. But if you have a long-term chronic degenerative health issue, if you're in long-term pain, if you have mental health issues, these are all things that we can control ourselves through our lifestyle and through our choices. All right, if you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, let us show you how easy it can be to reverse chronic degenerative diseases of all kinds. Let us show you how easy it can be to reverse female health issues, female reproductive issues. Let us show you how easy it can be to never get cold sores, to have beautiful skin, to be able to think more clearly, to have more energy, to be more resistant to diseases to be more resistant to colds and flus without a flu vaccine. It's not hard. Let us show you how easy it can be. Call us 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, likewise, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about skin health, ingredients, formulations, anything you may have heard about or read about, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Chuck in Idaho. What is up, Chuck? Welcome to the Bright Side. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Doing good. What's going on, my man? Good. Hey, um, I uh, talked to you a while back uh, okay. about um, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, and that's not what I'm calling you about, but I just wanted to let you know that I believe I am on the way of reversing that. Awesome. What are you doing? Um, tell, tell our listeners well, who have Hashimoto's. Well, I'm, I'm eating. I mean, we've eaten good for a long time, but I am being extremely careful about eating breads and, you know, any kind of, you know, all the stuff you talk about, lectins in seeds, um, nice. all that kind of stuff. Nice. Um, and, and you're you know, noticing a difference, more energy, less symptomology. I, oh, yeah. I don't That's have awesome. any of those symptoms anymore. You know, the cold hands and feet or the being really, like, uh, tired all the time. Isn't that amazing? Um, and you did it yourself. Yeah. You didn't have to go to the doctor. You didn't have to stand and wait in line at the pharmacy. And you didn't have to fill out forms. Uh, thank oh, you for man. sharing that. I, I love it. You know, that's why I want success stories. I could tell you the theory, and I could tell you my experience, but you know what? Your experience is more valuable to the listeners, Chuck, because you're actually living it. Congratulations. That's awesome news. Well, What's going gonna, on? How can, how can we help I'm you today? Keep you posted. I, okay, I'm going to keep you posted on that because I'm just starting to wean the dosage down on Synthroid, and it's okay, so far it's doing good. Good deal. Um, okay, but what I'm calling about is um, my daughter's father-in-law 
um, just recently had been um, having an experience where he had pain in the stomach, um, loss of appetite, he lost weight. Um, apparently, he just went in. They found something in his stomach. I did a biopsy, and they're saying he has stomach cancer. Hmm. Um, now, let me say one more thing before you um, before you take off on this. Um, they're they're very much involved with the medical model. His wife was a nurse for many years, and um, I know if I were to talk to them, they probably would go in one ear and out the other if they even listened, I would think. but um, So I just wanted to, you to give some insight. And even if they do choose to go the medical route with radiation and whatever they do, you know, um, maybe some advice on how to mitigate those effects. Absolutely. That's a great point. You can mitigate a lot of the problems associated with cancer or associated with chemotherapy through nutritional strategies. By the way, fasting is a great way to improve the effects of chemotherapy. Just going to say that. You can Google that. Fasting in, uh, improves the effects and reduces the symptom, uh, reduces, uh, I should say, improves the potency of chemotherapy, the benefits of chemotherapy, the cancer killing effects of chemotherapy, and also it will reduce some of the symptom, the side effects associated with chemotherapy. That's one thing, especially if you have stomach cancer. So, uh, by the way, uh, gastric cancer is a very common cancer, uh, very common cancer, but not surprisingly, because look how we're eating. Colon cancer, too. Between gastric cancer and colon cancer, you've got a lot of death by cancer. And obviously, makes sense because look how we eat today. So uh, here's, a, here's the deal. In addition to fasting, liquid foods, liquid supplements, especially protein. Chicken soup, hormone-free, obviously. Uh, clean bird, bone soup. That can be helpful. Cartilaginous factors can have a, a immune boosting properties for all immune health issues including cancer so liquefying your foods and using soups and vegetable juices very very important vegetable juices can be helpful same with aloe and noni those can be helpful vitamin c is an interesting one for folks on chemotherapy because a lot of literature talks about how vitamin c helps chemotherapy a lot of literature talks about how vitamin c can mitigate the side effects and the toxicity of chemotherapy but doctors hate when you use vitamin c if you're dealing with chemotherapy and you're going to have to make your own decision on that if it was me, I wouldn't be paying attention to my doctor. I'd be using the vitamin C, even intravenous vitamin C, for that matter. In fact, I'd be using intravenous vitamin C before I did chemotherapy. That's another thing you might want to think about. Uh, also, intravenous glutathione. And intravenous is important if you're dealing with stomach cancer, obviously. Hang tight. We'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to a Chuck in Idaho about stomach cancer. Here's the thing about cancer, Chuck, and for all our listeners. It takes a lot of abuse for the body, for cells to become malignant, for cells to turn cancerous. It's almost like the cell is at its wit's end. It doesn't know what else to do. A cell will turn cancerous when it doesn't have enough energy, when it's starved of nutrition, when it's starved of oxygen, when it's toxic for many, many years, for decades. It takes decades for cancers to develop. Under normal circumstances, when a cell becomes dysfunctional, it will just die. It'll kill itself. But over the course of months and years and decades of abuse, cells eventually kick into a primitive way of utilizing energy and this primitive way of utilizing energy is almost like they're in safe mode like your computer's in safe mode and they can't do anything else except grow and divide and that's what cancer is now that having been said having uh, the time to to deal with cancer is before you have it you want to prevent the cancer but that having been said remissions occur the body can remit cells can turn back to being normal. This happens. And if it happens in one person, it can happen to anybody. And it doesn't happen infrequently. It happens enough that we know that the human body is capable of turning it around. The human body has answer anti-cancer mechanisms. So all hope is not lost. Even, you know, they tell you that, sometimes they'll tell you cancer is like 99 or 95 or 90 percent, like pancreatic cancer, for example. 80 percent or 85 percent of people will die within a year or two. Right? 
But that means that 5 or 10 or 15% of people are going to survive it. A, a certain amount of people will survive. So if you do have, you're dealing with, and only God knows how horrible and scary it must be. And my heart goes out to anybody who's dealing with this. But please understand that the medical strategy is 